In Lebanon, the United Nations says the Israeli military opened fire on a group of peacekeepers, wounding two of them. And nearly two dozen people were killed and more than 100 more injured after Israeli forces leveled an apartment building in central Beirut. Israel is retaliating against Iran-backed Hezbollah militants who've been firing rockets into northern Israel for a year, displacing tens of thousands of Israelis. There's a real concern things are going to further spiral into a wider regional conflict. The world now is waiting to see if and when Israel will further escalate this conflict with Iran itself, perhaps direct airstrikes on Iran. Now, for a very long time, an influential group of foreign policy hawks have been calling for a full-blown military conflict or war with Iran. It is very clear that those people now see this moment as the best opportunity for that to happen. There needs to be a confrontation of Iran. We've put it off way too long. We need to call the question on Iran. They're the source of most upheaval in regime the change. I, I am a thousand percent for regime change, but you don't have to. How do did that work force. out last time America tried it? Yeah, in Iraq? I think we have nothing to lose. How did it work out when we got rid of Hitler? Better. Mm. Mm. He's Hitler. He's Hitler. Nothing to lose. This is the most forthright, honest articulation of not just Senator Lindsey Graham's worldview, but a worldview that's shared by folks in the upper echelons of the Republican Party, those around Donald Trump, perhaps most worryingly, appears to be shared by some key members of the Biden administration and its foreign policy apparatus, as well as the top levels of the Israeli government and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu himself. As Iran's aggression, if it's not checked, will endanger every single country in the Middle East and many, many countries in the rest of the world because Iran seeks to impose its radicalism well beyond the Middle East. Responsible governments should not only support Israel in rolling back Iran's aggression, they should join Israel. All this is giving me a sinking feeling of deja vu, I gotta say. If you remember the aftermath of September 11th, things took a very similar trajectory. The U.S. went to war with Afghanistan immediately after attacks. The Taliban was sheltering al-Qaeda, who had attacked us. But that was not enough, right? A lot of people in the United States government and abroad wanted a confrontation with Iraq for a very long time. And at this moment, they saw an opportunity to expand the conflict there as well. Months before 9-11, then-Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld wrote an internal White House memo advocating for potential conflict with Iraq. And just hours after the 9-11 attacks, Rumsfeld was ready to manufacture justification to do just that. Here are contemporaneous notes from one of Rumsfeld's aides recounting conversations with him on 9-11, just hours after the attacks. Best info fast. Judge whether good enough to hit Saddam Hussein at same time, not only Osama bin Laden. Hard to get a good case, need to move swiftly, near-term target needs, go massive, sweep it all up. Things related and not need to do so to get anything useful. Things related and not. Donald Trump Rumsfeld eventually got what he's looking for. We bombed Afghanistan, we changed the regime of Afghanistan, and then, before that was done in any sense, we then started another war. We pivoted the war that he really wanted, the one he really wanted in Iraq. And the exact same people were there cheerleading that war every step of the way. We need to get on with the idea of disarming him and having a regime change because it's in our national interest. I believe that Saddam Hussein is beginning giving aid and comfort, training and assistance to al-Qaeda murderers, that he has weapons of mass destruction, he is lying when he says he doesn't, and he will never voluntarily disarm. 500 inspectors, 5,000 inspectors are not going to make him disarm. He is a danger to our country and the world. He has killed his own people. And you're not going to disarm him, uh, but a diplomacy is going to take force. War hawks like Lindsey Graham even brought in a friend, then a private citizen, Benjamin Netanyahu, who just finished his first term as Israeli prime minister to make his case before Congress why a U.S. invasion of Iraq would be a good choice. The connection is not whether Iraq was directly connected to September 11th, but how do you prevent the next September 11th? It's not a question of whether Iraq's regime should be taken out, but when should it be taken out? If you take out Saddam, Saddam's regime, I guarantee you that it will have enormous positive reverberations on the region. Enormous positive reverberations. Don't worry, he guarantees. That was on September 12th, 2002, a day after the first anniversary of September 11th. 
And we now know that taking out Saddam Hussein did not have enormous positive reverberations on the region. In fact, it was the biggest single strategic boost to Iran in a generation. It gave way to the rise of ISIS, expanded Iranian influence and control, and made the entire region, including Israel, less safe. It also cost hundreds of thousands of lives. People that are like you and me, they are no different who had the misfortune of being born in the wrong region at the wrong time where the chaos that we unleashed destroyed their world. The war in Iraq was a moral and strategic disaster, and yet here we are two decades later doing it all again. A year after Hamas's October 7th attack on Israel, the suffering in Gaza has no end in sight. There's over 40,000 dead. There's unbearable misery across the entire strip of land. There's illness and desperation and death and destruction and children dying day after day after day after day and no hope for a ceasefire, no hope for a deal to bring those hostages home who are still there a year later. There's a regional war that has now sprawled into Lebanon. But the war hawks are not satisfied. All the attention is now turning towards what Benjamin Netanyahu and Lindsey Graham and so many others, including I think some of the Biden administration, have wanted for a while. That's war with Iran. We're watching it happen in slow motion. It is absolute madness to do it all again. 